to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Oh, Jabes. Uh, Jabes. You doing uh, neck stretches? Have to. Every day. Every, Every day. day. Every day. Your hair looks great. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Oh, oh, thanks. Yeah. Finally got it. Uh, the regrowth fixed. <laughs> Sorry, gentlemen, that it was bothering you guys so much. <laughs> um, I did. I I found a couple hours in the day. It was not easy. No. It was not. You had a little lady still, bear. Uh, yeah. I still had to move some things around and have like two babysitters and whatever. Sure. Is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So you come at me with regrowth again. Yeah. I mean, that's the answer. I, you, get, I get no help. You sent her to the salon, whoever you that was. You sent me to the salon, Brush Salon. Yeah. Shout out to Brush. Really great salon. Shout out to Brush. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, Kim Monoghan. Monoghan, dude. Monaghan, but. Yeah. Uh, Monoghan, I like it better, though. Mm-hmm. Um, did a great job. Now, I'm worried about Amazon burning. The. Uh, the s- I ordered something the website? yesterday. Sure. And I'm just making, I'm like worried that it's not going to be able to come. That your package is going to burn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are. I, a lot of I've seen a like lot of I people talking about it. I understand why people are so pissed. Yes, because who doesn't use Amazon? Amazon, yeah. I, I mean, it's crazy. And when Amazon is burning like this, I, so we'll see. We'll I mean, see. again, t- TBD, <laughs> TBD. If it if the package comes tonight, we're good. Everybody's talking about the Amazon. Rainforest obviously burning. Yeah, right? and, and people Brazil, that never talk about it. Uh, I've also never, never been there. talked about the Amazon. Never before. been there once, not one single time. Uh, so it's weird to me where it's just like you don't understand how important this is. I, is it? Have you been there? I it, don't know. California was burning. It didn't seem all that important. Apparently, um, it is environmentally very important Got to it. our ecosystem. Yes. So uh, I understand that. But again, that's not the issue, is it? Uh, there's your answer. I don't, I don't pay attention to the environment, you know? Gosh, what? I don't. So it wasn't Amazon. No, definitely was not Amazon and Bezos, Jeff Bezos. Few. Rainforest. Few. Few. So you're going to um, get that yeah, so uh, dude perfect Frisbee it's on time. pretty bad. It's, uh, it's what, what does it mean? Like, what does it all mean? You're, you're, you're taking away oxygen or trees or... You're putting an insane amount of carbon into the atmosphere. Because of the fire? Yes. I mean, Because look. of the... Uh, and everything that's in the rainforest. California burns down every goddamn year, so... Right, but it's not the same amount of stuff. But... Okay. And it's sort of the last bastion of, like, real... A real uh, untouched, you know forest yeah because everything else gets you know turned into cow fields basically which is another horrible thing for the environment okay but it's the last like untouched thing right and so it's it's sort of like if that goes and that's that's it and we're all just a concrete wasteland (laughs) um which again you get it out of the way no yeah just get it out really of the speak, way. I can't really then, speak to any of that, which is uh, why I made the Amazon joke, because I really don't know anything well, can't you about ju- it. Can't you just start to change your own weather patterns and things that you want to do? What? Um, I know. In, is it China, I believe, where they shoot rain up in the sky when they have droughts? Uh, they shoot some fucking thing up in the sky and then it rains. Gosh, this is the science portion of the show. Yeah. And we it, this always really garners a lot of messages <laughs> only because we both really, really, really know what we're talking about. They do. So in, in, in <laughs> right. China, they've been testing this thing they out where they clouds to make so you, you can. Yeah. Yeah. So you can shoot stuff into which we've done before, too. And it like makes rain rain yeah. down. So 
science. I don't know. The government, by the way, mm-hmm. which I didn't find out until two days ago, because we got we, there's this hurricane that is formed, Dorian, that yes. is heading towards Puerto Rico. Yes, right now, and uh, it's a Cat Three as we stand live on air today on Wednesday. I don't know what it's going to be like tomorrow when this Ooh. airs tomorrow night. Ooh. But on Wednesday right now, it's a Cat 3, and there was talk about nuking a hurricane. It's dropping a bomb in the middle of it and uh, uh, who was, changing it. Who so was talking about that? It, it, like, a, a Trump had made an offhanded joke about it, right? Uh-huh. But then there was an article that came out and said, hey, this isn't as crazy as you thought. Our government has been looking into this for years of... Could you drop a bomb, a huge bomb, in the middle of the ocean and change the formation of waves and wind and all that other shit? The, the, the ultimate answer came back at no, but they really did consider this um, in different presidencies over time. And I was really shocked by that. But then I sat back and thought about it, and I was like, well, fuck, would that work? Again, I know nothing about science, sure. but it seems sure. like it might, right? It does, and I f- I'm sure I've seen some kind of cartoon about it. But Definitely I don't know like what kind of bomb that would be, or, or what that would do to the wildlife and all that shit. Like, um, the fact that the government was actually thinking about this over time in in, in the history of our mm-hmm. country is pretty wild to me, right? Because as technology advances, right, with all these hurricanes, I mean, they're they're shipping these guys out to get pictures of the eye of the storm, like mm-hmm. every what is it, an hour. Because on that last hurricane we had, we were watching it hour by hour. I don't know if it's hour. guys or if it's Yeah, it's in it. They go out in a plane. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they go out in a plane. It's, it's like two dudes. I watched it behind the thing, uh, like a dock on it, right? Behind the storm, yeah. Yeah, behind the storm. And uh, they go and they fly over the storm, take a picture of the eye, and then shoot that back. And then that's what updates it every hour uh, to determine what the category is and the strength of the winds and all that other stuff. Um, I feel like as technology keeps growing and growing and growing, uh, if this Amazon thing, like let's say it fucking burned down and was catastrophic or whatever, don't you feel the rainforest? Yeah, the rainforest, yeah, Uh, and especially like like the environment, right? Don't you feel like scientists would be able to create some sort of climate bubble or shield for shit like this eventually? In our uh, like, I would say maybe not in our life, but maybe the next one. Probably where you could create artificial clouds or rain or things like that. Cause you're already creating islands, you know, artificial islands and stuff like that. Um, out in what is it? Fucking Dubai and all that shit where it's just like, all right, cool, man. How far are we away from just creating artificial clouds and everything else? We have robots right. that can jump now and punch people in the face. Mm-hmm. Saw that on the Boston dynamics thing. You got those goddamn dogs Mm-hmm. And then we, all, we, we always talk about the chimps, Jabes, mm-hmm. who are melding with humans. We can't be that far off from creating fake ecosystems where it's like biodome. And I'm, I'm always going to bring this back to Brendan Fraser because you still have him up there. Oh, B. Fraser. But uh, yeah. it's, I, I would imagine at some point, maybe you could build a fucking dome around the world. Is that too crazy <laughs> to protect from all this shit? Gosh, man, I don't know. You know, this is a real. <laughs> we're getting. Why won't you some... entertain any <laughs> of this? I feel if you are not walking around and touching it, like that, it, that is not real. Whereas I look at this shit and I'm like, man, I think this could probably happen one day. I think I just think of things more locally. Yeah. That can be fixed. <laughs> Whereas I'm, I'm acting globally. It. Well, yeah. you're still, I think you give science and technology a lot more credit than you should. No. I, I'll go back to the Y2K thing, right? That everybody shit on. Mm-hmm. I think that was a real thing. And I think. They corrected it. Yes. Yeah. But, but people aren't willing to correct shit in this world. You know this in this mm-hmm. life, in this fucking town, in this world, until it is absolutely fucking necessary. Yeah. Where yeah. it's just like, yeah. hey, man, we're down to the last yes. second or month or yes. whatever. And so I think that's when a lot of this stuff is going to happen. So I think we need to get to 
the absolute end of the environment. And so again, it's not going to happen in any time that we're going to see where it gets to a place where people like me or deniers or whoever are like, oh shit, (laughs) this is real. Or there's actually a countdown of like when this thing is going to happen, right? Right. And that will be so many hundreds, you know, whatever of years from now to where it's like, this is serious. Yeah. Because right now it's just sort of like, hey guys, we don't do anything. This is what's going to happen. And people are like, cool, well... I won't have to deal with it, right? Right. Um, And so to your point, I think that if until there is a month countdown Mm -hmm. or a year, with Y2K it was a year, they knew. Yes. We didn't find out about it until closer, but they had known about it and been working on it for over a year before that. I didn't didn't know. Something like this. Truthfully, like I was sitting in a hotel, I didn't know until Australia had switched over um, because they were the first New Year's. Yeah. That... Like shit wasn't going no, to be fine. Yeah, yeah, but you didn't even know that Y two K was like a possibility until you know that there would be something fucked up until what a couple months before New Year's. I, I want to say I remember they definitely it, like, maybe kept six that under or, yeah, yeah. So they definitely kept it under wraps and quietly were working on it behind the scenes right. for a really long time before we even like thought something bad was going to happen. So. Uh, exactly like that. It'll, it'll be like this in two months. If we don't do this, this, and this, this will happen. Right. And then people will be like, okay, I guess we'll do something now. Cause the, the, the other thing that I read was, you know, they're, they're expecting this asteroid to hit within like 10 years, right? One of those big fucking meteors or uh, very Armageddon ish thing. Mm-hmm. Right. But I think with everything, the technology wise, that we have going on with like lasers and, and even this space force thing that we always make fun of with Trump. Like, mm-hmm. I think it is real. And I think, you know, things from the atmosphere could come down and, and affect it. I mean, you know, obviously it happened in, in the planet's history mm-hmm. and it can happen again. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're fully expecting one of these things to veer towards earth in like 10 years. But I feel like now we're equipped with that. You know, we'll be more than equipped to blow that fucking thing out before it gets here. Yeah. Um, so, eh, I don't know. I don't know. Speaking of Armageddon, I saw a trailer for First Man. First Man. The, uh, Brad Pitt vehicle. Ah, different movie, but uh, he's an astronaut. So, I'm just saying that in that movie, Liv Tyler is also on a screen that Brad Pitt is looking at. You're kidding. Mm-mm. She's in the movie? Mm-hmm. And very Armageddon throwback, no? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. That she is always on a screen in those types of movies. Teared up, by the way, Armageddon. When oh, that my happened. God. Oh, yes. And the uh, Aerosmith yes. song? Aerosmith song, Bruce Willis, the dad. Yeah. She's like, oh, nope. Yep. Mm-mm. Armageddon I fucking teared up in. You oh, believe yeah. that? I do believe it. <laughs> I really liked Armageddon and I it did really too. did in the same way get to me. <laughs> oh, they don't really make, uh, you know, armageddon things. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, maybe we might have another armageddon type thing in First Man, uh, including a Liv Tyler on a screen yeah. being talked to from space. Yeah. So, again, am I there? <sighs> I'm probably there for it. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that's going to seem a little far-fetched, um, but I think it needs to happen now, now that we've talked about it. If that asteroid thing they're talking about that's going to hurl towards Earth within 10 years, um, I think we need to go live on every network, every streaming channel, and it should just be a picture of Liv Tyler watching it. And we watch her. I don't want any news. Nope. I don't want one newscaster. I don't mm-hmm. want Rachel Maddow. I don't just, want Anderson like Cooper. Yep. yep. I just want Liv Tyler mm-hmm. on every screen in my house with just with her hand up against the camera. I think that everyone will respond to that. I do too. I do too. Um, <laughs> I'm into that. Can we just do that actually now? Next week? Just have her up holding her hand up. Yeah. It'd be great, wouldn't it? Oh, we give people, that's our personal, we'll give you a personal message as Liv Tyler. Yeah. 
will give you a touching the screen personal me message. Um, please. Ah, oh, be good. The other thing I want to see, Peanut Butter Falcon is out. Yes, it is. Um, by and the way. very good reviews. It's a different type of movie, but... Great reviews across the board, and uh, this is the movie we were talking about a long time ago. Because my boy, Yellow Wolf, is Yellow in Wolf it. makes a little little cameo. His rap Shia boy, Shia LaBeouf, is in it. Who's always good, you guys. No matter what his little shenanigans are, he is one of those that gets away with all the things that he gets away with because he is fucking talented, I know. little motherfucker, I and know. always has been. By the way, he uh, he's got another crazy project out now uh called honey boy have you seen the trailer for mm -hmm. that that's about his life and and everything that he's done in it and how fucked up he is and was and like dad stuff and things like oh this. Every, everything yeah. and he's playing his own dad so he's playing the dad role and somebody else is playing him oh no yeah and it looks incredible i love that kind of meta shit dude he's, i like a little bit of a backstory he's good man it's so it, it's so shocking that he can get away with all the fucked up shit he does, man. But listen, nobody really can these days. No, nobody can. And they can't. It's old school like Robert Downey Jr. could get away with it, right? There's yeah. a couple other people that could have crazy meltdowns and we still are like, give him the job. Because there's no one else that can do it as well, yeah. right? I mean, dude, even Downey Jr. was this close to never coming back. It, it, yeah he took the money on ally mcbeal right uh or was it boston legal one of the two i think it was ally i think McBeal. it was ally mcbeal yeah i don't think it was boston legal. but I, but uh, that was his only offer and like let's say that doesn't pan out right mm -hmm. uh, he's not iron man he's not anything after that uh with with shia labeouf i think he has to do these indie movies where he is as great as he possibly can be mm -hmm. um and then go back and do other shit but uh you're right he's super talented and uh and a weirdo a and very creative and like i've i've said before when we when these like rock stars commit suicide or something right mm -hmm. and i've always said like you if you want your artists actors musicians to be like super fucking creative and crazy and weird they're going to have to be that way right um otherwise you are who yeah. Nick Jonas. I mean, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's like if you want them to be that insanely talented, talented, you have to take the other thing. And I think a lot of people that work with Shia. Yeah. Shia. La. <laughs> Shia. <laughs> um, with LaBeouf. Yeah. Um, I think know that. Right. And I think they know going into it. Is there someone that no matter what shenanigans you would allot for some shenanigans just to get them in a movie that you're doing, right? Uh, is there an actor for me? Yeah, like is there someone if you were writing someone something you'd be like, I'm gonna let him do his crazy shit, maybe ruin some shoot days because I need him. Yeah, in this movie, whatever it may be, him or her, probably not a her. But probably not a her, but uh, no, women just not, are not as good. At no, not that. I just uh, if, for, it's why is it more tragic if a girl does it, by the way? It is. It is. Yeah, it's just I, more tragic. Like, so I don't think there yeah. is an equivalent where a girl is allowed to be that much of a crazy person. Maybe there is. But Drew Barrymore is the only one that I can recall. Coming but again, back that's from old it. school. That's like I, I, down I Robert yeah, Downey. Yeah. So today, would it Lindsay fly? Lohan didn't no. get away with it. Mm -hmm. No. Well, she wasn't talented. Yeah, but you know, oh, look, we've we've had this discussion before. Uh, what I will say is this: with his Peanut Butter Falcon movie, um, there is people coming out of the woodwork that are friends of mine in L.A. Um, one of my good friends, uh, Eric Eric Amadio, uh, did a movie for him. Uh, he directed it. Stuntman. He's the creator of uh, Snow on uh, FX. It's him and John Singleton mm -hmm. that, that created that show. Mm -hmm. He posted about it uh, last night and was just like, look, I never post about small movies that you should go see in a theater, but it's Peanut Butter Falcon I'm and you should go, go see, see this in a theater. And I was like, oh, shit. All right. Not because it's big and crazy and 3D, but because um, in the theater, those emotions will hit you in a different way. Yes. I think. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. not like a big crazy movie that you need any special effects or 
anything like this, but why see it in a movie theater? A, to support small film. Yep. And then B, because I think it will hit you in a different way than if you see it at home. I, I agree. I agree. But you um, never said the name. Who's the name of the guy? The name of what guy? Oh, that but I would. You would take all the shenanigans for. All the shenanigans for um, currently. Uh huh. Tom Hardy. Yeah. Does he have shenanigans? Probably not. No, he does. But Mad, Mad Max almost got shut down. But because of his because crazy of aggressiveness, not because like drinking after and getting arrested and like. Right. Just it, how aggressive he is yeah, yeah, acting yeah. wise. And yeah. it's him or Christian Bale. Probably those. Oh, those are my onesie yeah. twosies. Um, but anyway. I, I would probably actually Bale would be first and then Tom Hardy. The two of them. I don't think there's anything Christian Bale can't do. So I would absolutely say the same. Yeah. I, I think those two guys are uh, as good as it gets right now. Um, and then uh, the close third is probably DiCaprio. If you had to put Even up though I didn't dig the Tarantino movie, man, he was great in it. and He was everything in that movie. Man. So uh, I just, you know. He's one that's so weird to me if we want to go down this a little bit where – he he has such a fully formed, amazing, like affable character that he creates, like Wolf of Wall Street and this movie. Yeah. That when people do that so well, it's crazy to me that they can't do that in their real life. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? We're like in real life or whatever I've seen of him, interviews, what have you. Um, he's quiet and mm -hmm. very more reserved and a little bit awkward to be honest yeah I, look, and I, it's so crazy that someone can just turn that on but not be able to do it in their real life yeah i mean i, I told this story on the show where i i had dinner with him one night and yeah. uh he was and it was like i don't know four of us um but unbelievably polite and great nicest sure, nice guy in the guy, world not but an like, asshole but just very hat down and even in a private we were in a private room that was blocked off from everything and uh hat down um quiet uh engaging like he would talk to you but uh kind of shy a, a little bit where you were just like oh shit man but he can go for wolf of wall street and be, oh yeah, blah, blah, yeah. Ah. or even the um once upon a time in hollywood like very, I don't know, just these little mannerisms and how he talked to people. And yeah, he's just great. He just he's like great. this cool dude, right? And you're like, oh, that's so weird that well, you know how to do it, but you, can't, but you don't do it. You don't apply it. I, I, think though, Maybe he does. I think though, besides acting, I think that applies to everyone in life. I think everybody has some weird skill that you would never imagine. And you're like, man, why doesn't that apply to whatever else you are doing but or, not or, or very... why can't you do a lot of things like that um and, and i think that's that's with everybody in life right where you know you have this great talents or skill to do something and you're like oh why can't you just do this other thing and it's like foreign to them right are you talking about me i'm talking about everybody are you talking about like why are you so good at like sound and everything and then you yes can't, actually you can't clean i am uh, no <laughs> But since we're that super uh, messy, <laughs> since we're going down the rabbit hole today, let's just go, let's just hop all the way in at this point. Um, you can do a lot of things really well and just pick it up and do it. And that's like, that's a crazy skill that I, I am good at the things that I am good at. I am not picking up new things off the fly and, and, and are magically great at them. Mm. Um, you and uh, Matt Best is really good at that as well where you can take something new and just apply. Just figure it out. Yes, apply yourself to it and figure it out, whereas my brain is it's, it's confusion for new things or new skills or new whatever. I do think that I was born with you know, a certain set of skills that is great, and I don't know anybody else that can probably do them. Yeah, um, so but the rest of it is a fucking mess, you know, where I just can't. I can't pick up things like that where it'll lead to frustration or right. shutting down or just saying, get this out of my face. Um, I mean, you live with me. It's true. Uh, whereas you can do a lot of things and then sit there and 
for Does hours on it, end and and uh, and figure it out. Do you think it comes back to patience? Potentially. Because it really is all, it's not that a- any person is smarter or more equipped or whatever, but it's the thing of just sitting there until you get it. Um, and coming through, you know, coming up against all the obstacles and going and finding a different way and da, 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 da. So I think I don't think it's anyone being like more skilled or better or smarter or anything. I think it's literally just the patience to fail, 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 and then finally find a way. Well, I, I think with me personally, I think that I was as a kid, I was good at a lot of things early and I could pick it up like any sport and be the best at it. Um, I was, I was really good in school and I was in those fucking, you know, tag programs, those talented and gifted programs and all that stuff. And like, I picked up, I I was just good at the things that I could do. Right. Whereas Mm -hmm. then when you're not good at things later on in life, you're like, why the fuck? Exactly. So there's no patience or there's frustrations. Uh, You know, I think that, that led to not having patience, being frustrated with things and, um, yeah, I, I, okay. I, like it, looking back on it now and uh, I'm fucking saying this out loud, I guess, uh, as the first time I've ever really thought about it. But that's probably it where I didn't have, I don't know, with, with school, right? I, I went all the way through college and f- figured it out in systems that were like at Ohio State, you know, I love it, and, but there's 65,000 kids there and the way that, classes are structured and the way that there's so many people in the same majors they make it so you can't really graduate in four years um because there's just not enough yeah, classes yeah, yeah, and yeah, things yeah, yeah. open and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to fight to get into your major classes and things like that and it was like but i figured out a way to do it in four whereas my best friends did not mm. i was the only one to do it in four years um so school I could always figure out sports. I could always figure out. And I was really honest with myself at a young age of what I was great at in life and what I wasn't. Hmm. Um, because at a, a certain point with the sports thing, you all, like every boy probably out there thinks you're going to be a professional baseball player, basketball player, whatever it is, right? Um, there's a hard reality once that doesn't happen for a lot of people. It's at the end of high school mm-hmm. where it's like, Oh, I'm not going to go on and play college or whatever right. it was for me. It was like ninth grade where I was just like, Oh fuck. I am all the people that were on my walls, all the posters, all the, the my heroes that I looked up to, I will never be that good. So I've got to find a different route in life. Um, and that's crazy. Like in ninth grade, I don't know anybody who just did that, you know? Figured that out. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I'm glad that everything seems to be working out the way that the things that I've studied or applied myself or the things that I I, I am great at, I think. Um, Because otherwise, I don't know what what the fuck I would do or try to learn or, you know? Yeah. Uh, So, yeah. And maybe that's part of it too, where you're you're scared of failing, so you don't want to jump in and do it yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Like, uh, man, because there's things that you know, fucking putting together a goddamn bed or something or a crib or whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. When those pieces fall out of that box on the floor, and I see this map with letters that extend way beyond the alphabet, um, it. In my mind, it is so much confusion that it's like I just put my hand on a stove, on a hot stove, or I'm right. like, I'm grow on fire. But I think that's patience. It's not that your mind can't ultimately do it. If there was a gun to your head, I think you could. But it's a, it's a, it's it a is. But there's, thing. but but it's looking at pieces of things and not seeing, seeing that they don't the end fit. Result. Well, just not seeing that they fit that way like a a right or a left and it's always wrong. I always choose wrong, whatever that is with putting something together. Um, I don't know why. Whereas I could take a a puzzle, any type of, you know, jigsaw puzzle and I could put that together. But for something else where there's 
90 letters and a bunch of things. A jigsaw puzzle? Oh, putting oh, together yeah. jigsaw puzzles? Going on the I road. I don't know. Going Might on be the another road. career path for you. I know. Going on the road. Yeah, um, didn't know you could do that. Jigsaw puzzler. Now that's a new fun thing. Yeah. But look, we're learning a lot about each other and oh a lot my about gosh, we're ourselves just ra- today. We're just aren't rapping. We? Aren't we? Haven't uh, seen you in a while. I know, right? Fuck. It, the, the, the stress of all of this shit has been crazy. Uh, yeah. F- fucking When does this book. come out? When does what come out? This show. Uh, Thursday night. So, yeah. Okay. Book, l- a lot of life stuff going on. Um, shows, travel, new studio on top of the new studio I'm very that we're emotional. Both in. my kids are starting. Yes. School. Yeah, tomorrow. Both. Yeah. And uh, that's a big thing. So there's just like a million things that right. are going on right now. So I guess uh, if you're wondering why we're so introspective today, that's probably it. Because life's fucking crazy, dude. You know? <laughs> and like, you never know, right? <laughs> Gosh, and it just goes by so fast. Yeah. End yeah. of an era. End of an era, brother. You know? Um, you got to really be in the moment. Be present. <laughs> and if you're wondering at home whether or not we're going to the Olive Garden for the New York Times bestseller list, I don't know. Because that we don't find out until like 5 or 6 o'clock tonight, which is Wednesday. But by the time the show airs, so the by the time the show airs night, we won't know. The Sunday night show will let you guys know. Yes. If we win or not. Yeah. But if we go, you'll probably see on our on our uh, socials. Facebook and Instagrams and all that so. shit. Uh, man, we've just been rapping. we got to get some, some, some sponsors, Japes. Okay. First up, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Come on, Japes. Come on. If we could sleep, that's where we'd be sleeping, right? I know. If I know. we could get a solid hour. <laughs> but again, I, can't, I shudder to think what my sleep would be like if I wasn't on a ghost bed. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, the only miserable. reason that I get to sleep the amount that I do. Miserable. Is because of that, right? Yeah. So, gosh, I just, you fuckers that like don't have kids and. That's crazy, right? And you're just sleeping on a ghost bed. Like that must be the most amazing sleep of all time. I know. I so know. good for you. Good for if you. you have it, if you don't have a ghost bed, then they go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 15% off for uh, all military and first responder. Go to the bottom of the sites, click it, take it, rip it. Uh, you get everything beds, sheets, pillows, uh, you name it, mattresses across the board. Uh, as always at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. They got a pay as you go program, 36 months, interest free. No excuses. There's no excuse. If you need None. a bed, None. 36 they got you months, no interest. They got you covered. Jabes, got you covered. Literally everyone should have one. Good to go. Just saying. Uh, next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. No carbs, no sugars. Pop it open. You, you can uh, just squeeze it into any liquid available. And uh, keeps you going. Lasts longer than five-hour energy and uh, spices up your drinks. A lot of, lot of people putting it in claws these days. Oh, yeah, because there is no, um, no, laws. no laws. No laws. So you can do whatever you want to do when you're drinking White Claw, right? Subscription of the month. Uh, go to StrikeForceEnergy.com today. Type in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Uh, last but not least, this is what you came for, Jabes. That's what they came for. Straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you rock! Yeah, there it is. Ish. It's the last part, I think, that's really annoying people these days. Alec, that it's one even that got Alec. last yeah. up, uptick, right? Yeah. yeah. Just uh, finding new and exciting ways to annoy you guys. Oh, you're doing it, Jabes. But you can find new and exciting ways to groom yourself on with... On straightrazors.com. Blammo. 
Uh, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. They get everything you need in this life to be a real man. Not a little boy. Not a Pinocchio boy. Not a little loser boy. Not a little dummy. Not made of wood. You're a fucking real boy now. Straightrazors.com. Be a real boy. I think that's their new slogan. <laughs> be a real boy. Be a real boy. Not a wooden puppet. Not a, I not like a wooden it. puppet. Uh, revolution 20% off at straightrazors.com. Um, and then we do, I've, I've got a call with, uh, the guys from, uh, super seed well on Friday. So they might be uh, joining us as well on the show. That you and I are gigantic awesome. fans of, uh, super seed We uh, are. Yes. Um, we're just trying to work on the, the refrigeration process of it. So they make, uh, we, we talked about this a few months ago. They make, uh, basically carb free. Um, yeah. So it's like pizza crust and uh cookies gluten um, free so it's no like yeah and it's flour right so like when you when they make almond flour all of this so yeah, yeah. it's the same as that only it's all seeds and really like super food seeds so yes. it and so really you know i'm gonna relax on the fucking gluten bullshit because i think it is bullshit i just look at the carbs and sugars and uh carbs. there isn't any in it so um it's fantastic if you want like snacks and things like that. And their CBD cookies are the fucking greatest goddamn thing on the planet. That's the main thing for me. A, they taste good and B, they're a perfect amount to just like relax before bed. So right. right. That's so why I love we're working, them. We're working uh, I, I, on a deal with them. Um, the only problem is refrigeration. Um, I think the orders are have to, will have to be over 75 bucks to get free All I shipping will because say- it comes in a... One of those cooling things. And yeah. anybody who orders like meal prep and shit, like that's uh, that's what it comes in, you know, mm. obviously. So, yeah, you, you can't control the, the temperature in states. Right. You but want to show up a box box full of melt, you know? Yeah. And there's really no getting around that unless that technology and stuff changes. Yeah. Only because unless you're going to put a bunch of preservatives and crap in it, and that's the whole point is that there isn't any of that. So the only way to preserve it is to, refrigeration. To stay so, cool, man. As you guys know, if you want, you know, crap free food, yep. uh, uh, whole foods, it's going to cost you money, right? Yeah. But I think $75 as far as like an amount, you will use all of it. It will not go bad once you get it home in the freezer, in the fridge. You will use it and you will love it. So it's yeah. kind of like, do you make that initial payment so that you get free shipping? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, we're working with them uh, because we love them so much. So I know, we'll man. See so what I'm, happens. I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, either way, man, I, I would love to have them because it's uh, what they're doing is is phenomenal over there, uh, for real. So we'll see. We'll see if we can make something work. But uh, I want to talk about. Uh, this Chevy Chase thing today. What is that? Um, I saw Chevy Chase trending, and I was like, "Well, he must have died." Sure. I was like, "He first must thing be you dead. think, right?" Yeah. It's, it's trending, never for like a new. It's trending number one, and I was something. like, "He's either dead or uh, or said something racist, said right? something racist to someone, mm-hmm. right?" Um, no, it, this was a crazy story, man. That's uh, <laughs> it's in the Washington Post this morning. Um, so there's a a Chevy Chase dog park. Um, in, uh, in, in a super rich neighborhood, right? Okay. Um, they spent, so there was like this like uh, plot of dirt uh, that was kind of in the neighborhood and they didn't know what they were going to do with it. They spent $134,000 to fix it up into this dog park, right? In this Chevy Chase village, um, which I guess is in... Uh, in Burbank? I, no, I think it's in... Because um, that is Chevy Chase Boulevard. <laughs> no, no. I think it's in... Uh, fuck is this? Man, what the fuck is this? What are you talking about? Um, I think it's in... Uh, I, I want to say it's in Washington, D.C. Either way. Um, it's the community of, of these rich and powerful people. The average household income is $460,000, right? Um, for this neighborhood. Mm-hmm. They built this dog park. Okay. Then they were pissed that the dogs that were in it were barking too loudly. So the neighbors inside the neighborhood called the police every single day. I love it so much. (laughs) 
every single day. So you have like the, the top one percenters that everybody, you know, hey man, we do this and this is great yes, and we yes, believe yes, in everything yes. else and yeah. But a dog park in your own neighborhood, um, so where and you at, live. At what point were the cops just like, okay, is this about the dog again? Yeah. Are these about the dogs? Yeah, it is DC. It is DC, yeah. yeah. So I, look, it, the, the guy on the fucking village board is uh, the wife of uh, Jerome Powell, who's obviously the chairman of the, the Federal Reserve. And it's like, man, this is what's going on in Washington right now. Um, but, but that you're calling the, the police cops... every single day for dogs barking on a dog park that you guys built in your own neighborhood. Is it really that bad? Of what? Do- dogs no. barking? I mean, fuck no. If you're in the park, it's not like it's a house right next to you. Now that I would call the cops every day, right? Yeah. The uh, other thing is calling the cops <laughs> on dogs. <laughs> Is very interesting to me. A real housewife the other day called nine one one because her dog was dying. Ah, definitely not uh, the right place to call. Um, but like, I, I'm, I'm going to read you this quote that's in this article because I look, I can't believe it um, that somebody would sit for an interview of this and actually give their name. But since they did, we're allowed to use it. Uh, you're so uh, out of touch when you're that elite. It's crazy. Right? So it says around dinner time. I like to be able to sit on my deck and maybe read a book and chat with a friend or have a glass of wine and the dogs are barking. Now, I'd like to hear, can we get Joni Edwards? Can um, we get a recording of like, I bet it's like not even bad. And she's, so this is Joni Edwards and she has, uh, she is one of the neighbors who has been calling the police. Joni. I would not admit that in a million years. Nope. But again, when you're that, People go crazy when they're not doing anything with their life, right? <laughs> People go crazy when they're like the elite, like just in their house, busy body, things like this. Oh, man. I bet it's not even that bad. That's crazy. It's crazy to me. So uh, they're asking dogs not to bark at the park right now. And, are they arresting uh, the dogs? What are the cops doing? I look, I don't. I don't want to. Do we have little like dog cuffs? Say that they're they're arresting. They dogs. just go like a little bit smaller. <laughs> because again, I bet Joni would be okay with that, huh? Oh I bet man. Joni would come out with the little cuffs. Joni. The neighbors. The neighbors uh, supported it. They supported it, and uh, now they they can't. Um, so to limit the barking. In the early hours, the board has uh, changed the opening time of the park uh, from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, and that's to li- that limit the fair. hours And of then the closing barking. it what? At um, sunset? Yeah, probably, probably right around but Joni, sunset. But again, Joni likes to sit on her deck. I'm guessing probably around sunset, don't you reckon? Wouldn't you? Yes. So I think we're going to need to close that dog park and again the cops will have to deal with this but a little bit before don't you think sunset so Joni can yes yeah, can, can Joni chill. can have her wine relax and, and chill you mm-hmm, know because it's about and to chill. start raining Joni so shut the fuck up yeah so she can fucking Netflix and chill now listen um I lived outside of a dog park yeah we all have if you've lived in well not we all have sorry but in LA yeah Everywhere you go is a dog park, by the way, because everyone's in apartments. So I think, uh, yeah, we all have, right? At so one morning, uh, I, I live next to Runyon Canyon, like literally right next to it, which is like the, if you follow Joe Rogan or anybody, like whenever they're posting pictures of their dogs, like hiking up a fucking hill, it's, That's where they're it's going. Runyon Canyon. Um, so I lived in this apartment complex, the, the literal one that looks over it, um, all the way at the top on the right, right? Um, it's open super early like that. It was like 6 a.m. or something fucking mm-hmm. crazy. Uh, um, and I was so fucking hungover one morning. And like there was these dogs like because, uh, you know, L.A., right? You, they, there's one entrance in and out and like everybody's in a hurry and pissed off. And they also think that their dogs are the, the greatest well-trained. Special. Yes. Special, special dogs of all time. So there there was always like 
dog fights right before you get in you can hear like dogs snarling at each other Mm -hmm. and this i heard this one couple or these these two people like screaming at each other right because they were like your dog was tried to bite mine and you know scratched it or Mm -hmm. whatever it was Mm -hmm. and the dogs were barking so fucking loud and these people were screaming over their own dogs barking and they're trying to hold them back on these leashes and i just hung over a shit at like 6 a.m got outside and i was like all of you including your dogs need to shut the fuck up um because this is crazy right um just leave just go Mm. to wherever you're gonna go like the park is big enough you never have to see or run into each other and they were like no you fucking stay out of it and i was like well now this is gonna happen uh we had a cookout the day before that's how we got so drunk um Mm -hmm. we could just blow out cookout right i had uh a whole tin pan full of uh hot dogs and hamburgers in it um that were left over from the the grill went into my refrigerator you listening Joni? yeah went into my refrigerator a good idea to do walked out to the balcony um that these people were fighting and i threw the tin out through the tin over. Yep. Yep. All of it. And then there the was dogs. 30, 40 hot dogs, maybe 20 bergs out there in the streets. No, but the actual dogs started eating all of them. And, yes. Okay. And shut the fuck up. Right. Uh, and they were pull, ripping the leash out of the way of their owner. The looks on their faces for this happened because they stopped arguing. Now they're trying to figure out how to get their dogs from eating all this food because a dog can't eat that much food. Right. Before they start shitting themselves and like, it's, mm-hmm. it's bad for the dogs, right? Especially before a big hike. Yep. And uh, this woman, the look on her face when she looked up at me, she was just like, <gasps> I can't believe you would do this. And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, well, I can't, can't believe you'd be fucking arguing over this dumb shit right. this early in the morning, lady. So right. enjoy your free meal is what I said. And then I slammed the door and uh, they, did, they did not story. come back. Yeah, they did not a... come back. Mm-hmm. So... Again. I can see, here's, here's why I say this. Joni. Joni. This is advice for you, Joni. Why wouldn't you, Joan? If you're tired of it and you really want to Netflix and chill, just take a huge tray oh. of burgers out there and just chuck them. Because if you're, look, if you're making 460 grand a year, which is the net income in this fucking mm-hmm. place, right? You can Oof. afford to, to roll out to McDonald's and just get a, uh, you know, dollar double cheeseburgers or whatever it is. Sure. And, uh, you know, on Wednesday for sure. You fucking could. get yeah. 30. Just mm-hmm. spend 30 bucks and mm-hmm. then throw those up in the air inside the dog park. You're going to have a lot of silence then, Joni. Yep. A lot of silence. Take it from Ross. <laughs> Take it from me. Someone who was super hungover and didn't want to hear LA people scream at each other God. over their fucking dogs, man. And that's a whole nother. If I'd have met you then. It you is know, a whole nother, uh, a whole nother, <laughs> a whole nother world we'd be in. I, here's the thing. Simple solutions. Mm. I look for A to B simple solutions. Uh-huh. How do you get this? Like, let's just end. say I was the girl that was in the room. Cause there must've been a girl in the room and I heard you doing that. And then that actually happened. Yep. Be a different world we living in. <laughs> Be a whole different world. There's a lot of laughter in that house that day. Sure. A lot I of bet. laughter. And because uh, uh, Tristan, one of my best friends from college, he was living with me. Uh, he was engaged. Um, oh, I would laugh for sure and like have fun. And then I'd be like, <laughs> and I'd be like, eh. I was so hungover. I think, I, I wonder if that was the melanoma night where I fucking cut open that watermelon and stuffed it full of golden grain and took it to that, that really nice party in Los Feliz. Oh, maybe. I think that was when I was living, you know, when you graduate college and you're still living college and you're like, oh, yeah, we can right. go to a nice dinner party and mm. bring a melon with golden grains stuffed in it for two weeks. And everyone's there like champagne, like nice wine. Everyone got sick and threw up and it, yeah. Whores, uh, divorce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah. just thought it was nice, like sliced up melon. That reminds me of when I first, I got invited to like a neighborhood I think it was Halloween party or whatever, but like in somebody's neighborhood with the moms and stuff like that. And I brought jello shots. Oh, really? And it was like, I first got the thing, right? First moved here from Los Angeles. So I was like, that's what people do, right? Party. And they were like, "Eh." they had beer and like some whores divorce, right? Nothing else. People ate them. One of the guys passed out in the ladies living room. Like it didn't end well, but they were not. 
super excited about it when I first brought him. Sure. It was kind of that side eye look of like, okay. Yeah. Jello shots. All right. Well, yeah, I'm not yeah. going to have one, but Randy <laughs> can or whatever. And you're just like, sorry. And you just realize that you, you didn't read the room, right? Or that you, uh, you need to change my, it up a little bit. So uh, here, was Grow my, up. here was my mistake was my definition of party was way different than an adult right. party. And there's get togethers, there's party. Yes. There's party. Yes. There's all different but being older, variations. You know, now being you an, know an older adult now, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I absolutely know then. But at 23, I didn't fucking know. No. I was I like, oh, it's a party? Does. Great. Yeah. Let's fucking party. Yeah, party. They're like, oh, it's more like a get together. Yeah. Dinner party. Uh, okay. I think you might have the wrong party. But then there's always the guys there or something that will partake, right? So you're oh, like, yeah. then you're the asshole that like got the husband drunk or whatever. Exactly. And yeah. that's what happened to me. Yeah. So uh, they're like, yo, if we can have some, the wife's like, yeah, one, you can have one. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened to me. Absolutely. They never had I me get back. It. I uh, get it. I was young once, <laughs> you know, I get it, man. I get you want to party and stuff. It's just time and place. Yeah. You know, reading the room. It really is, isn't it? It really is. Um, sometimes I'm getting it. Sometimes I'm not. What? Reading the room, you know? I <laughs> think <laughs> that is true, actually. <laughs> I'm not going to elaborate on that. If I'm bored I in a situation, if yeah. I'm bored at a situation, then it's just like, yeah, it's my, might as well turn this into my amusement now. I think you've just leveled off to where you are a certain way all the time now. Uh, whether it is a let's go crazy party or a small get together or whatever, you have the same demeanor. Well, I you've think- just sort of gotten to this place where you're just Ross. Like, is Ross coming? Yep. And if Ross is coming, yeah. you know exactly what you're getting. And so you maybe don't always ask Ross to come. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So can you read the room? I'm not sure. I think they read you. And you that's, know what I mean? And that's what I appreciate about people, too. Exactly. Where it's like, do you want this to be yeah. a Ross party? Then invite me, right? Yeah. If you want to be boring and dumb, don't. <laughs> I think is what it's turned into. I'm not really sure. I enjoy the fact, though, that people know that about me. Yeah. Where it's just like, hey, man. Yeah. Because otherwise, I don't want the invite. Yeah, because you can't turn you off. No. No. Like, Once... you'll never be anything other than what you are. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, again. I I'll... don't want to be anything other, other than what I've been, been trying to be lately. lately. Um, Miss Gavin McGraw. Perfect for Wilmington, right? Yeah. Miss Gavin McGraw. Why do you miss him? I, he, he, was, he was putting out hits. He oh, okay. Hits He's alive, right? Yeah. I think he plays still. He tours. He does. Yeah. I, but ah. yeah, yeah, he hasn't had a uh, big hit in a while. I, I, he's had a couple, though, other than that. And uh, I selfishly would have wished uh, they gave all of Shawn Mendez's music to him and just let him sing it because I think it would have been better. I know that sounds weird, but... Uh, better than him? Uh, no, I wish Sean Men all of Sean Mendez's music had gone to DeGraw. To, yeah, to Gavin DeGraw. DeGraw, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. The, I, I think it would would have been better. I, I wish people would give him more hits. The VMAs. Oh, boy, are we going to talk about this? I'm not I gotta, sure. Only because I'm I have officially I'm officially too old. Uh, so I did. And um, that's it because I'm not I'm, young, I'm obviously younger super and, young uh, just and, keep getting younger and spry yep. yeah um, I did watch the VMAs uh, one of our best friends was nominated multiple times but it wasn't her so it wasn't here's, Ariana's uh, award show that was last year here's uh, well we can talk about it it's, it's fine um, she was on the show um, very early on I want to say one of the first like 20 episodes right maybe 30 uh, she Hannah was Lux Davis. Actually. Was she really? Mm -hmm. How do you remember that? Um, I don't know. I really like her. She's great. Yeah. Um, it's and she's married to my one of my B fries. And he's been on a couple times, so I don't know his Brandon numbers. Brandon Bonfiglio. Yes, and he will probably be on again. But he, now he's won. He's won a, a VMA. He's got it in his house. Mm -hmm. Um, 
which is cool, right? It is. But cool. his wife has worked her fucking ass off for and years is and years, insanely talented, and has directed the biggest music videos on the planet, and has not won. She's been nominated. She she gets nominated every single year. I think this is her fifth fifth or sixth year in a row. She's not won. She directed the Thank You Next video for Ariana Grande, which was video of the year. That was the biggest Come video on, of last guys. year. Um, and I thought I I wrote them privately before and I just said look this is your year your has to be yep and uh it was not um and they didn't go yeah because they it's gone so far now as you know where they tell you so yeah so I, I think they got the heads up but mm-hmm. uh and looking back on it now because Taylor Swift won so I'm sure to get Taylor to to go there they probably said, hey, man, we're going to give you this fucking thing. Well, Ariana didn't go. She didn't. No. Oh, so, she, so they fucking knew. The idea is this, which I found out about the VMAs, is they kind of attach themselves to an artist and make it their year, right? Right. So last year it was Ariana Grande. She was performing everywhere. She was winning. She picked up every award, blah, blah, blah. And I think this year they aligned themselves with Taylor won everything performed was the camera was on her every second it was her year and they were making her like her coming out or her whatever her party so what here's what what I took away from it when watching it is I I, because I think you're right um uh but my takeaway was this her new album had just come out it is really goddamn good Taylor Swift and uh they have been sinking in the ratings so far every year that I think they they went all in on Taylor Swift, hoping that would bring the ratings in. The budget of it was just so I mean the whole production. So everything was here's just the in final the numbers toilet. of it. Uh the final numbers of it were one point three. So that is one point three The cameraman for Taylor was just like yep. drunk. Yeah. He had an up the nose shot yeah. and then he had a, a wide that you could barely see. And it just, like, they could not get it together. It was all disjointed. It was all over the place. And it's just going in the toilet. So, again. So, they got a 1.3 rating, which is 1.3 million. Uh, To put that in perspective, our show has 1.6 million listeners. Um, So, we should give out our awards. Our awards to musicians. Uh, Yeah. And what they did was it, it spread across... Uh, so tw- like 12 networks aired it all at the same time because Viacom owns all mm-hmm. of them. So it was on VH1, CMT, MTV2, uh, fucking Nickelodeon, all that shit, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, total on all those like 12 networks, it was like a 5.4. It, it was terrible. It's terrible. So I, I received a phone call later on that evening um, from someone saying, uh, did you see what an atrocity this was? I mm-hmm. said, yes, I did. And uh, uh, their exact words were, MTV doesn't show music videos anyways, right? Um, so they're not on there. What's the point of having these award shows on this network anymore? And why isn't anybody doing it um, in a different platform that is more music video centric? Mm-hmm. And I said, what would this platform be? And they were like, why not have a new music video award show and give the the, stream it on YouTube Mm -hmm. for free, Mm -hmm. give out the awards on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it's, you're going to know who the best of the best is there because the numbers back it up on YouTube. Um, That's the first thing I go to when I look at hit songs or videos or whatever is like, you know, there's some videos that have a billion views on them, you know? Yeah. And, uh, or if Spotify could come up and I, here's, here's the thing. So I said, who would have the power to do this? And uh, the name that came up was unbelievably interesting. Um, and I heard this deal is close. And uh, I will talk about it in the future. But it is someone we've talked about on the show in the past. And if this comes to fruition, um, I think it would nuke the MTV VMAs. I think the, the, music, or the movie awards have already nuked themselves. Um, I do. I, I, cause they don't show videos anymore. Mm-mm. Um, nobody watches that the, the movie awards either anymore. Those are in the toilets. Mm-hmm. So when is the end of all of this shit? Probably. Yeah. Uh, and I, I would imagine it's gotta be pretty soon. Cause to put on a production for 1.3 is, is not going to do it anymore. No. 
And I don't know how you're going to get people to go artist wise when mm. it's just like, man, that is not moving the needle. I mean, it takes somebody like Taylor Swift. She could go live on Instagram to fucking 40 million people and yeah. do whatever she wants. So mm-hmm. um, I don't know. It, it felt very bought off to me, the award show. And, uh, and, and meaningless. It makes all of the awards meaningless because, oh, as they have been for a while. But it's all just meaningless in politics. And like I said, they align themselves with Taylor this year. Ariana didn't go because she knew that's what it was. And she won like one thing. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And Taylor didn't go the year before mm. because it was Ariana's year. Yeah. And they all kind of like find out whose time it is. Um, but I, I, look, I, I think there is with this YouTube thing and this call I got, uh, I, I think there is a lot of cool shit you can do on YouTube in a live setting like that. Not only can you get away with more, um, and it's more spontaneous, which is what these shows used to be, by the way. Yeah. Because yesterday was like the 10 year anniversary of the Kanye thing with Taylor Swift, mm-hmm. right? You used to have crazy moments and shit like that. You don't have that anymore. Um, you just have, drunk, but you do on YouTube. Yeah. Camilla Cabello. Yeah. You do, you do on YouTube. And uh, I think that Logan Paul dude who, you know, love him or hate him, uh, is really kind of pushing the envelope of, of what is possible on YouTube in a live setting like that with, with his fights. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they had that, it was YouTube superstars boxing each other mm-hmm. last year. It was very, very, very successful. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they were drawing fucking millions. I think at one point it peaked at like 10 or 12 million people were watching it and you're like, Jesus Christ. And I think they were charging 10 bucks or whatever it was, right? <clears throat> You're not going to charge for an award show, obviously, but, uh, you know, Trump's been using the platform for rallies and, and everything. And it's like, man, I, you might not be that far away from more and more events like that, moving to settings like that and off of traditional TV. Um, I said a couple of years ago that I believed all of these networks would eventually combine mm. VH1 and MTV and all that other shit and become one for Viacom or Paramount or whatever mm. the fuck they're going to call it. And I, I, I still believe in that. Um, but your that show was abysmal. Um, it was hard to get through, and if I wasn't watching it to see if you know friends had mm-hmm. won, that I would not have watched it. Mm-mm. And it got no promo, no press for no, it. It just <clears throat> kind of came on, and I knew nobody on the carpet performers. I knew like, so I had to look up a couple people, and it was just like, okay, have fun. Yeah. I, see, I, I do because I listen to, all, to I listen to all the music and everything, and you know, yeah. I, but I just didn't enjoy any of the the new shit because uh, it's so just seems so canned now, and nobody can really say anything in public uh, anymore that's fun or spontaneous mm-hmm. or edgy because it's you know a million people will come down on you. Uh, I'm amped to see this new Chappelle show that dropped this, oh, yeah. this stand-up special it's good everybody's been talking about that and uh they're saying jesus christ he went all in i don't know we haven't seen it yet um it just dropped and uh i will let you know but everybody that my, like friends of mine have been like you know every like non-pc thing you've ever wanted to say and just i mean really fucking go for it they were like well Chappelle did it and uh you can Pretty much wrap it up and call it a good night on there. So I'm extremely amped. Uh, I just need things to to wind down a little bit here, and then we'll get into that, and then right. we'll talk about it uh, maybe on the next show. Yeah. But I'm amped about it um, because that's that's what I thought with the, 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 those awards last night. Like, do something fun, crazy, do something, anything, be alive. And uh, I don't feel like anybody was, or Chappelle apparently is. So. Yeah, because he's writing his own ticket. He can do whatever he wants. And it's uh <coughs> it's kind Can't of amazing. Take anything away from him. <clears throat> He'll no. just go back to doing stand up. Um and the last thing I want to chat chat about before we get to the revolutionary figure of the day is um uh SNL just put out their schedule for um this Eddie fall. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy's on it. And I Foof. Foof. G- now, why gigantic did he do it? fan of Eddie Murphy. What was it that why he hasn't done it? They have some. 30, so he, he hasn't he hasn't done it in thirty five years. Did he get fired? What happened? No, he hasn't even been back to any of the reunion shows. Yeah, nothing. Why? Uh, 
during his time <clears throat> that the, that he was on, right? And he was credited with kind of you know saving SNL. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's happened at various points of the show. Um, when he came on is when ever, all those guys left, Belushi and Chevy Chase and all of those guys left, right? So right. it became the Eddie Murphy show, essentially. Right. And he fucking carried it. Um, and Lauren Michaels was not there. Lauren Michaels was fired. So mm. the biggest star to ever come out of SNL in the history of the show when, well, was not Lauren Michaels' yeah, pick. Yeah, yeah. And there has been some rumors along the way that Lauren wasn't amped about it. And uh, uh, there was a joke uh, David Spade did on that segment about uh, how shitty one of Eddie Murphy's movies was. And Eddie Murphy called um, in and said, hey, man, I'm one of you. Can you right. not make fun of my right. shit like this? Um, and he wasn't thrilled about that. And uh, I think with Eddie Murphy in particular, like, especially after seeing that comedians in cars mm-hmm. getting coffee, I think he's so self-aware of who he is and how big and famous and talented and everything that he is that he just was able to walk away and not need that shit not have to do it, not have to. Because if you, if you remember that uh, SNL special where they all got together, right? It was everybody. Like, there was some people that were clamoring to be there of like, oh, oh I've got to sure. have this. Whereas Eddie Murphy has never needed it. And mm-hmm. he's the only one that has walked away from starring in movies on his own volition. He didn't get forced out for, you know, a bunch of bombs or whatever. Like, mm. that motherfucker still gets more offers than probably anybody in town and has for years. And um, I I just think he's so self-aware of his greatness that he left and was able to do it. Now you're probably asking, why is he coming back then Mm -hmm. after 35 years? There is a rumor going around that he signed a $70 million deal with Netflix to do one stand-up special, which would be electric um there's two projects th- three projects in the works that he's doing now so one is coming to america too yeah. obviously. Is but that's shooting stand-up? he it, it, that's shooting and is not out till next year right um no reason to come on snl in december because it's the christmas episode right um no reason to come on snl in december to, to promote that if you were going to do it you would come back the following year right uh, so it can't be that there was a, I heard he did a movie for Netflix, um, like a true story movie, a biopic. So it could be promoting that. And, uh, maybe it's an Oscar E type movie. Mm-hmm. So maybe he's promoting that. Mm-hmm. He's got to be promoting something. He would not just pop up like this. Right. Or it's the long rumored stand up return. And, uh, and that Netflix has backed up the truck and gave him 70 million to do it. Has he been that. doing stand up around popping I don't know. in at comedy store <clears throat> things like this? I don't know. And, and with that episode of the Seinfeld thing, it was taped, you know, a year ago. So we don't know. Uh, we don't know what he does. Mm-hmm. And, um, if that's it, man, that would be a lot of pressure. A stand-up special out of Eddie Murphy after doing two of the greatest of all time would be a lot of pressure. Um, maybe it's for that Netflix movie, though. Um, either way, I am more than amped that Eddie Murphy is back and, uh, and going to be doing SNL, and I will definitely be watching that night because um, he was, man, he's, he's one of the greatest to me. Yeah, Probably him and like Robin Williams to me. And I mean, fuck, man. Uh, Eddie Murphy is just magic, dude. He's great so I'm, I'm super super excited about it uh if you can't tell no i can tell yeah uh <laughs> with that we'll get to the revolutionary figure of the day jables um i was doing martin luther king on the show a couple weeks back uh for uh the school board the school meeting. board meeting uh that's coming up it's coming up uh september 17th mm-hmm. and anyways uh it was funny that it popped up in my Feed this morning that uh, today is the day of the I Have a Dream speech 56 years ago. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Well, there you go. So. There you go. Easy just, pick. Just happens to be <clears throat> three weeks before 
the big guys going before the school board. So. Now, you're just going to be getting off the cruise. Is your hair going to be cornrow braided or cut? I, 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 look, I've promised you the summer of Swayze will end on the cruise. I will so let someone's going to cut it horribly. And then who's going to cut it? You. I'm going to let you. I promise you. I said, let look, me. I I'm said I would you. let you do whatever you want into my hair. And I want you to get your fucking hair cut. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it will get cut. But I'm going to do it. You always do it. Who else does it? <laughs> what am I? You want me to go to fucking Great Clips? I'd like to separate our business relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you cut everybody's hair in the neighborhood. I know, I do. You do everybody. Kids, all of it. I do. Yeah. Again, another thing I'm good at. Yes. It's just like, what? You have a crazy, crazy. amount of talents, whereas I have very few. It's like few. a Mary Poppins bag. I have very few. Mm. So, uh, anyways, Javes, weird, wild show. but uh, Weird, wild show, and we will I know. I liked it. We will know We'll know on the next things. episode. We'll know all things next episode. All and, of the um, things. Stay tuned yes. on the Instagrams for... All a bread stick or two. Every, everything that's going down uh, is going to be fun. And subscribe on YouTube. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.